Welcome. Uh, this is Jenkins Platform SIG meeting of May the 23rd, 2023. Welcome. Today we have with us Damien Duportal, uh, Kenneth Salerno, Mark Waite, and myself. Welcome. So today, um, on the open action items, we'll talk briefly about something that does not progress, but that's not really a problem. Uh, it's a Docker container image for the Blue Ocean uh, product. And we have to say at each and every meeting that uh, it's not progressing, but someday it will eventually. Actually, and we have some progress on it. No way. Yes, we do, because there are now four approvals on the warning message in Jenkins core that will that will allow us that's the beginning of the step we need in order to kill that container image at least for me to feel comfortable that we killed it with honor by telling people it's unsupported so yes there will be more changes needed so we have several weeks before it'll be visible in a weekly and probably won't be won't be dead final dead until about the same time as we do CentOS 7 but we have the we have the tooling now that we need to do the job excellent uh yeah we have the tooling now as we should say precisely we almost have the tooling to do the job when it's merged <laughs> then we'll have the tooling and another pull request will update the tooling to do a little more Oh, sure. Cool. Uh, got it. Uh, it's almost a running joke, you know, we have to talk about container deprecation, and then you come with some good news. <laughs> okay, too bad for my running gag. Uh, now, uh, two weeks ago, Damien, you told us about code factorization that you were working on, and I think I saw some more um, pull requests this week and the week before about that subject. So would you have anything to share with us? Yes, the first phase that I described last week of factorizing uh, between GDK version on each repository that has been already approved, done, fixed, deployed, fixed again, fixed again, and it should be okay on agent and inbound agents, um, on SSH agent as well. So that's, yeah, we removed, we were able to decrease the amount of code of three times. So that will ease the factorization. So now I'm entering the second phase that should be finished until next uh, SIG meeting, that merging inbound agent inside agent. We keep updating both um, uh, both images, Jenkins slash agent and Jenkins slash inbound agent, but they would have a release cycle uh, that, that should be the same for both. When you have a new a new change that will build and deploy both images at the same time. That's the scope I'm targeting, which does not change anything for the end users, except that the source code of one of the Docker inbound agent repository, once working and released at least one or twice, should be put uh, as archived and deprecated and everything should be on the, the Docker agent repository. Mm. Uh, that's the target for the next time. I have everything ready right now uh worked a lot on the windows tooling but yeah that's the status and then we will uh, do a report and we'll bring on the table the proposal for the next step after this is done but right now that shouldn't change anything cool uh good job in that that was definitely necessary before merging everything at least that's my understanding which is very partial <laughs> to say the least <laughs> Uh, now, you have also worked on Alpine images, uh, so we can use update Kli and Jlink with me. Thanks a lot for your guidance, your patience, and your time. Uh, so we're progressing. We've already done, what was it, Docker agent, which is now using update Kli. And we're and hoping to yeah. Yeah, fix um, SSH agent sooner or later. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Mark, now back to you. CentOS 7, early end of life. I know you like to get you'd like to get rid of CentOS 7. So what are the fresh news? So the the pull request has four approvals, not yet been merged, but with four approvals, I think we're very close to getting it merged. 
and so the the important dates for people here are to be aware that users who use the CentOS 7 image containers will see this warning message pop up already. If they're running weekly, they'll see it beginning May 30th. So mm -hmm. roughly two weeks, uh, a week from now. Yeah. Um, users who are running the long-term support release who are running weekly on the operating system without a container, if they're on CentOS 7, will also see it. Now, LTS, they won't see it until... August, August, because that's when the, that's the first opportunity for 407 to be visible to any users of LTS. Uh, we can certainly actively promote it, but even when they see it, they'll have three months warning before we declare official end of life November the 16th. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Good news, thank you. Uh, so we still have to replace into a seven usages in our containers. Yeah, and that's a complicated one, right? Because one of the things we do is the base JDK that we receive from Eclipse Temerin uh, is based on a CentOS 7 image. We use it in all sorts of places. We and, and all we're doing is we're using the JDK from it. So we're not actually using that operating system. But it feels odd to have a reference to CentOS 7 in our container definition when we don't want to support CentOS 7. However, finding the alternative choice of container from Temerin is not as clear to me right now. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I didn't get it. So, is the JDK by Temerin built on CentOS 7, or are we extracting a JDK built? with whatever operating system, uh, which is part of the CentOS 7 image. So I don't know how to answer the first question. Is it built on CentOS 7? Because okay. I don't worry about how Tamarin builds it. That's up yeah. to them. But they definitely package it into a container whose name has dash CentOS 7 on the end of the container name. And we use that packaging of that container to get Java 11 so we can run JLink from that image. And so we're just using their container as a, as a packaging step in our construction of our final container. But we use that not just for CentOS 7, we also use that for Alma Linux 8 and for the UBI 8 image. And it really makes sense in those cases because CentOS 7 is a, an, a predecessor of Yep. Red Hat Linux 8. But again, it needs more work. Um, okay. Just a reminder the, is that the risk are really low of changing as soon as possible from CentOS, whatever version, for the Timurin extract to whatever UB Linux, because the Gilling step will take care of resolving the dynamic runtime dependencies in slash lib. Mm -hmm. So the the generated package uh, that we use and then copy, which is stripped from the debug symbol and multiple optimization, should also uh, be completely compliant if you have exactly the same um, operating system on both images. So I don't know for Alma Linux, but for UB, since I remember, I might I might be wrong, but I'm almost sure I remember seeing an Eclipse Temerin UB definition. So that one should be quite easy. Well, the Alma so, Linux is more the one I'm not sure. Well, an Alma is just a, 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 a relatively simple derivative of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. So it's like UBI. But the UBI image I've seen is UBI 9. But I, I like your observation, Damien, and I think it's it should be easy enough to, to do the assessment and the test to assure, assure that, yes, the image we get out of a change of container looks the same actually as the image we got before we switched from CentOS 7 to the UBI 9 base container. Because I would assume Temerin is probably not doing a different build on UBI 9. I bet they've got a single build that they package onto multiple Docker containers. Okay, uh, uh, we can look at that. Just a point, we have another solution. Oh, which is stop relying on the Eclipse Temerin image and instead download the GDK from Adoptium website mm. with a checksum control. And we can keep the multi-stage build though, meaning uh, from Alma Linux, whatever image, 
you download and you run glink to strip so you keep the same pattern to have to gain these precious megabytes and that means you will be sure with that case of be, being able to not depend on the ability of Eclipse Timurine Foundation to deliver Docker image, which are always published later than the Timurine itself. Okay, so you, you would be okay if there were a switch to still use multi-stage builds, but use one of the one of the phases of that multi-stage build would be download the binary from the distribution from Temurin and unpack it and then run JLink. Exactly. Great. The only pattern here is that tracking the version of the GDK might be a bit more touchy. That might require switching absolutely from Dependabot to update CLI or Renovabot, because I don't know if Dependabot is able to update to get... the SHA. Exactly. While update CLI and Renovabot are. So that's the only pro and cons. Yeah, that's. Really interesting, I must say, uh, but I don't think I understand everything. When you say our containers, Mark, um, what are these? The um, Jenkins controller? Um, so yeah, the container? Jenkins controller. Sorry, I should be more more precise. No, the no, Jenkins no. controller container definition uses a layered approach where it first brings in a layer that it calls something like Java, or and and that layer is the thing that it uses to copy in the JDK, and then it runs JLink on that. OK, thank you. Uh, we, uh, it looks like what we have in the agent, uh, I must say, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Damien? Yep, there is an opportunity here to see we have a common foundation for yep. all the images here. That yep. something to have in mind. I don't say we have an immediate actionable, because that's quite some issue but still we could think about that but yes you are correct that's the same thing we do on all the images so yeah could be reused yeah uh because i've been working lately with update p and so on and the multi-stage docker for the agent so i don't think i'm able to do that but maybe i could have a look uh, at least open an issue so that we don't forget it and then maybe address it later on if you don't mind, or if you want to open the issue or do the PR, anybody's welcome, of course. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, that was, uh, the explanation was much needed for me, at least. Uh, thanks a lot. And then, so we'll have a uh, blog post announcing CentOS 7 end of life in Jenkins. And I guess you already have it all written, ready to post. <laughs> uh, no, but, but I will write it with pleasure. Yeah. While smiling, there there will be there will be there will be serious joy when I while I'm writing it. How about that? I totally get it. Okay, and then we have a few other pedring system end of life um, near us this year. So Alpine, Fedora, Ubuntu, Alpine, three fifteen, Fedora, and so on. So I guess all of them. I've had a look lately at your pull request more. And I think that all of that will be handled by the code that you provided, which is not yet merged, if I'm not mistaken. Well, uh, the, so the because there's a six month notification window by default, mm -hmm. that means beginning with 407, May 31st, the top five of those will already immediately begin seeing warnings. So Alpine 315, now we don't deliver any containers based on 315 anymore. But if someone's making the mistake of running on Alpine 315, they'll see it. And we certainly do deliver to people who are running Ubuntu 1804, and they will begin seeing that with, with, the, with next week's release, assuming that pull request merges. Okay, I won't be naming names, but uh, <laughs> I have someone who always tells me, uh, friends don't let friends run latest, you know? So people may use uh, a fixed version, but maybe they don't have uh, a, a update key or depend about, run about, whatever. So some of them may have the surprise uh, from 407 saying, oh my, I'm using a deprecated container of some sort. Uh, that's, so that's, that's, the, that's our hope. We would really be pleased if people saw the message and, and actually took action on it. That would be a really great result. Yeah, I confess that I run N minus one Fedora for that reason. <laughs> I'm always six months behind. 
And, and so okay. long as you as long as you keep that pattern, it's a healthy pattern. It's when you become 18 months behind that it really hurts, or you become 12 months behind that it hurts, right? And minus one with the latest patches. Right. Cool. Yep. <laughs> thanks. Uh, by the way, Kenneth, because you were talking, uh, thanks a lot for all the work you did for PPC 64 LE because your controller PR finally got merged uh, since the last meeting. So congrats on that and welcome on board. Uh, then I've got what? Yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all the support. Oh, thanks for coming and giving some help. Uh, I would say in French, uh, now we have a list à la prévère because we have lots of updates on the Docker images of the agents. So I saw lots of releases for the SSH agent, lots, meaning two, I think. So there were lots of fixes about Windows I saw on Git, for example. Damien, you, do, you did a lot of work regarding uh, GDK, JDK, sorry. And of course, we bumped thanks to Dependabot uh, Debian on a more recent version for the Docker agent. Um, Mark, mm. you changed something um, so that we get the right version number in the Alpine container. And then Damien and I took um, your work and changed it so that now we have the Alpine version updated thanks to update click. So that should work now. And by the way, I think somewhere in here, yeah, we have now the Alpine Linux version to 3.18.0, thanks to our combined work. That's pretty cool. Uh, K Kenneth, you got uh, upgraded as code owner for the Debian Docker file. Congrats. Yes. <laughs> and we also had some um, JDK version tracking working now, which is pretty cool. And for the Docker inbound agent, uh, the parent image Jenkins agent has been bumped and bumped and bumped. So now we are having the 15 version of the parent. And Damien, once again, you made some work about JDK um, factorization. So that now all of them have the same JDK definition. They all are working with the same tag. Anyhow. Um, Anything Just a to quick add note. on this part? Yeah, go ahead. If anyone wants to help, uh, I've tried to open atomic issues for the SSH agents about different elements that need improvements. Uh, I will try to do the same each time I see something because that will help. Uh, I, I wouldn't say beginners because that's still uh, most of the time complex issues, but any maintainers or people with Docker skills uh, could get started if they want to contribute uh, on this element. Yeah, I wouldn't say being a beginner would be a major uh, issue because there is help from the community nonetheless. You know, I took an issue that was way too big for me, but uh, with your guidance, for example, it's progressing and I hope to get it merged in a few weeks from now. So all is possible. I don't want to um, use your time, you know, so people, if people don't know anything about Docker and Jenkins, of course, uh, that's not a good idea to start uh, trying to resolve an issue. But if you've got, um, if you know something about Docker and Jenkins and the agents and so on, and maybe about update Klee, yeah, that, that could be done. That, that one could be a, uh, a good first step for beginners or people who want, want to get started. We still have dependencies that are not tracked on each image. I'm thinking right now on the Git LFS version, for instance. Um, I don't want to go on the Git uh, loophole because yeah, that one is a complicated <laughs> topic. But Git LFS, for instance, is an example of dependencies that are installed on all the images, but that should be tracked with a system like Renovabot or Update CLI already in place. Yes, you're right. And I've seen an issue about um, JDK tracking with update uh, CLI, for example. So that's something that could be done yes. by somebody who doesn't Absolutely. have that much. Anyone interested can get. Second element that I forgot to put on the agenda, there have been one major change uh, on the way we deliver the controller image. Now it's based by tag. We create a tag and the tag triggers the release. We don't have any more the script that do things uh, because it was a pain for the infrastructure port. 
And right now, the question that we discussed earlier today on the infrastructure SIG is if whether we should give permission of release members to the to be maintainer uh, on the Jenkins CI slash Docker repository on GitHub, so they could create the tag manually, which, which is the, the case today, or if the infrastructure team can work on automating the tag creation. That's the road we want to take. But maybe we will fail or we won't have time. In that case, we will need the maintainer to create the tag at least once a week after the weekly release and the person in charge of the LTS release of the code. That will be a temporary uh, measure during the, the transition. And second thing, we realized that since... So, yep, raising, raising hand, sorry, yes. Damien. Um, before we go off of that one, we've got an immediate situation with the 2.406 release. Uh, Alex and I discovered that the change that I had preemptively merged four or five hours ago was necessary, but not sufficient. And therefore, we merged a new change to 2.406 or to the current master branch, and a, a build has just started. We are therefore probably three or four hours away from having that build complete. The challenge is three or four hours away from us is a bicycle with me on it. <laughs> so I won't be ready to apply that tag. I, I will apply the tag after I get back, but it could be five or six hours from now before that tag is actually applied. Don't panic. Uh, if, if in the worst case, the 2.406 container image waits until tomorrow. Thanks for the notice. Yeah, that, that's one of the major issues we have right now. Sorry for this one. But that that allowed us to deliver way more in months. Um, I will come back on the Jenkins controller next SIG meeting with two major questions, spoiler alert. First one is to start having a weekly branch and an LTS branch, maybe not named like that, but to have the Docker image built based just to be sure that we don't update the same thing at the same time because LTS need to be LTS and need to be treated even on the Docker image. And the tagging version that, um, uh, yeah, that's that will be another topic. Second major topic, uh, I was reminded earlier today about the Jenkins CI Docker inbound agents, plural form repository. Um, that's us some homemade uh, images for agents with some uh, popular languages such as Ruby, Go, etc. Uh, there were there weren't really a consensus during the past year about that repository, but no one is maintaining it except one user that did a pull request a few months ago. And the user reminded us that his change wasn't delivered to the Docker Hub for good reason on the infrastructure, we are not deploying these images on trusted CI since at least one year and a half. So I, we will take care of delivering that change now because the user did a contribution that we merged. But I want to raise the topic and people to think about, I will want to include in the depreciation program that we are putting in place, the depreciation of these elements because it's dangerous to run these images at home. No one is maintaining them. We don't know the version. I mean, I'm not even sure Python has, a has been removed for the version two. Uh, I mean, it's too much work and no one stepped up. I already asked people complaining that we wanted to deprecate. And then suddenly when we ask for maintainer, everyone start to be silent. So I think it's dangerous for the community to keep these elements. And I will want to advocate for either by default deprecating them unless someone stepped in to maintain these elements. And by maintaining, that means ensuring that we keep the languages up to date, Maven, Golang, GDKs, inbound agent parent, uh, Ruby, Python, PowerShell, and there is another Terraform, I think. And um, so I propose to deprecate it. Think about that. Um, one of the proposal I had was to write down a Jenkins.io web page, maybe part of the GSOC program or not, but at least start with the readme here that say, hey, if you need these images, then here are Docker file example that you should follow. I mean, it's still the Docker file out there. People can build themselves and host themselves. 
but we shouldn't have to worry about these images because they have opinions that no, no one used them, almost. Okay, thank you, Damien. Uh, no one uses them, almost. Uh, makes me think of the last subject, but I don't think we'll have the time to dread that. Docker hub stats. <laughs> Sorry, you opened the door. <laughs> So, uh, so yep. on the on the on those container images, oh, what was I? Oh, oh, we have a page already on Jenkins.io that talks about Java requirements, that talks about Windows requirements, that talks about Linux requirements. I think it might benefit us to have one that talks about container requirements, and and what what policy we have in terms of of containers that we are willing to to watch and containers we're not we're not maintaining right and yep. and our expectation that containers that 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 the jenkins project delivers have active maintainers because containers without active maintainers are not healthy yep. same idea as the plugin il score but for containers yeah i agree but uh, do we have um, yep. sorry do we have an exhaustive no. list of all the containers that we deliver the supply. I can I can get you one based on really? the cool. Docker Hub export. We, we can look at the Docker Hub export and see yeah. from there. And I think in that article, Damien, you want to link to the hacking doc of the inbound agent because the this way you don't have to rewrite those instructions. Yes, good point. Absolutely, that will avoid duplicating information and will be always up to date. Exactly. And if we Absolutely. change our steps in one, we remember it's all in one place. I have to say, if you are interested to help, I wouldn't <laughs> say no, because as you can hear, my French accent, and I, you can bet that my French writing in English is not the best one. Mark can confirm. But um, yeah, having people, uh, English natives, would help. And also, uh, with a different point of view, because things are in my head, I'm trying to structure them, and it's it's not very well structured within. <laughs> so having an external, per someone that's outside my brain would help a lot uh, for this one. Yeah, no, but I can help you. I think uh, if you, uh, if we work together to put together that matrix of what's supported and what's not, and then I could help you with the wording around it. That would be wonderful. Sure. Uh, I'm going to start the exhaustive list then, Thank which will mean. be the same subject as the Docker Hub stats. Uh, yeah. I was able to see that the export that I can get as an infrastructure administrator on the Docker Hub are anonymous. So having a shared uh, spreadsheet where we put the CSV data every month, we have two kinds of data that can be get um, the statistics per image and per tags for each image of the downloads. Uh, so this information could be interesting to take decisions. So my proposal is to start the document and to put everything and I share it with you so we can start reviewing it and discuss that at the next meeting, if it's okay for you. And that includes the exhaustive list of images, of course. That could be a get uh, starter for us again. Yeah, good idea. Great, uh, we're already one minute late. Uh, would anyone have anything to add, a question to ask, a comment, something? Actually, I need Anything? you to rewind on the notes because I inserted something earlier in the notes after we passed them. Okay. Let uh, let's see. Which where it's, whoops. Back up just a little. Whoa, right there. Just above the uh, what's been done. It's the in progress thing. Right there. Whoa. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Further Do down. After yeah. CentOS 7 end of life. Remaining work. There what go. has been done yeah okay proposal to switch alma linux container from eight to nine is open and oh cool uh damien and i have been discussing it in the controller because the label uh, just people should be aware it would be nice to include that in the lts change log with 2.401.1 next week because lts change logs are a great place to put that kind of thing mm -hmm. but that would mean we would need to merge it before next Tuesday, so it'd be visible in weekly and then visible in, in in the change on Wednesday as well in LTS. So just be aware. By the way, Mark, because I wasn't 
I'm, I'm, my message were confused, but my proposal was to switch that pair into adding a new Alma Linux 9 first, because that one can be merged quite quickly, while removal of the existing Alma Linux 8 might trigger more difficulties. Ah, uh, good. That okay. could be slowed so... down. While the first one, as soon as we have a new version, now we don't have the issues that slow down uh, can it work. Now that we have fixed that problem, we can quickly deliver a new Alma Linux 9 and start testing as part of the weekly process. So the LTS could be focused on um, the removal of the of eight. And if, if we don't have the time, then we can target the next LTS for the removal without breaking people's usages. Uh, Mark, what, what packages are people using in Alma and CentOS that they're not getting in UBI? What's the purpose of those? I, I I truthfully don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, mean, I think it's the binary. story, the fundamental story is why bother with Alma at all? But that's a bigger question, right? That's what I'm basically asking. I mean, right. unless there's some package that's not in the UBI repo that they need, but binary compatible, why not use UBI? Exactly. And it's a valid question, Kenneth. And and it's a question for which I have no answer yet. That's That's a bigger conversation about shall we end end alma linux completely we're ending centos 7 we've got an end of life process there i don't have an end of life process for alma linux that is container specific but we could easily do it with the tooling that with a little bit of an extension of the tooling that's about to merge to jenkins core so so we could pretty readily declare to people alma linux container is ending life at this date in the future and and they would then be warned, okay, you need to get off this, go to UBI. Which answer the question about Eclipse Timurin. We can use UBI Timurin package for Alma Linux that should be binary compatible. Yeah, except that the Timurin package is for UBI 9 and, oh, and, our, and our, our Alma is currently Alma 8. I don't uh, know if, so long as they don't rebuild so as long as they don't actually build for Linux nine, we we're probably okay. But Good. it would okay. need testing I to be sure. That inform that important part. <laughs> Thanks. I forgot. Okay. Anything else, Mark? No. Excuse the delay. That's that's all. Fine with me. Uh, I don't have a a bike ride to do, so uh, I'm fine <laughs> with that. <laughs> Your bike is waiting for you. <laughs> Uh, so um, I think that's a wrap up. Uh, thanks a lot for coming to this meeting. Uh, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. Uh, see you two weeks from now. And until there, enjoy Jenkins. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Thanks for the work that everyone put there. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.